Hello, uh, purpose of this video is to explore um, arithmetic series within the context of logarithm um, because uh, IB in particular has a, an excellent knack for combining multiple parts of the curriculum and here's how they managed to do it. We can talk about logarithms and all the properties related to logarithms. We could also talk about arithmetic series and all the properties that go with arithmetic series as well. Um, the first issue, of course, is, is what kind of series is this? Uh, because, I mean, I guess we would have to determine whether or not this is arithmetic or geometric. And uh, so one of the things that you'd have to explore is, uh, you know, what is the nature of this? Is it arithmetic or geometric? Um, and I'll show you what I did. Um, I kind of actually jumped to that conclusion that it was arithmetic before explaining it in the video. But suffice it to say that you can subtract two consecutive terms, and that should give you a number. And if we subtract the next two consecutive terms, that should be the same number. If that happens to be true all the time, then we have an arithmetic series. Of course, if we wanted to divide this by that, by division, we would see that uh, we're looking for a common ratio. Second term divided by first term should give us the same ratio as the third term divided by the second term, and so on down the chain. Once again, I identified this as arithmetic, and uh, it can be verified using this subtraction of two consecutive terms in the sequence. Now, when I see subtraction of logarithms right away, that should light up um, you know, a section of my brain that says, oh, yeah, there's properties for logarithms. I think that's how this one works. That is, the difference of the logs is equal to the log of the quotient. Therefore, I do a little bit of mathematical magic, math magic. And we end up with this truism, and that is the common difference is the uh, negative one-half natural log of b. And once again, I don't have it written out here because of uh, time issues, but I should verify that this is in fact arithmetic because it was not already stated in the problem. Um, so you, do sh you should prove that uh, or verify that it's, it's arithmetic before moving forward. However, um, trust me on this one. If it's arithmetic, then I could add up 23 terms using the sum formula, um, which is a uh, sort of a derivative of the one that Gauss came up with in grade age 5. <laughs> anyway, 23 is the number of terms. The first term in the expression is the natural log of a cubed over the square root of b, and the common difference we already discovered is uh, negative 1 half natural log of b. So here's the first term, doubled. And then we have 22 times the common difference. Um, we put all this together, and that'll be our sum. Now, IB, of course, asks questions to, uh, it tells you what form they want, and the reason is because you could stop here, and technically that is, in fact, the sum we are looking for. But uh, IB is trying to assess your ability to not only find a sum, but then to use the skills we taught um, to uh, clean this up, make it better to work with. So we have to demonstrate some prowess in working with logarithms as well. So first, uh, 23 halves, that's no problem. Uh, the first thing I did here is I took the 2 and used the power rule. I squared a cubed, and I squared the square root of b, so that cleans up real nice. Uh, 23 minus 1 times negative 1 half is going to give us negative 11 natural log of b. Then I'm going to power rule that negative 11. And I am going to uh, product rule the sum of these two logarithms. Power rule one last time, we make uh, 23 halves the exponent. 6 times 23 halves is 69, and 12 times 23 halves is twice that much, which is 148. So this, go back and make sure is in the correct form. First of all, it's natural log of a to the something over b to the something. Are m and n both integers? Yes, that's true. Everything fits. I'm pretty sure this is right. The only thing missing from here, like I said, is verification this is arithmetic, and the second thing that's missing is uh, some sort of support. But if this is an IB exam, what works are shown here is adequate. This one's a lot tougher because um, this it does tell us it's an arithmetic sequence, so that was awful thoughtful. Um, but I'm noticing that the bases of the logarithms change, and all my logarithm properties are basically logarithm properties dependent on having the same base. So I already do not like this. I'm intimidated. Moreover, it's really hard for me to perceive the difference between these two. So finding the common difference is kind of a challenge as well. So the first thing I, I'm concerned myself with is this, this uh, format, this reciprocal of a logarithm. And I started thinking that uh, 1 over the log base 2 of x is really 
log base 2 of 2 over the log base 2 of x because the log base 2 of 2 is nothing more than 1 in disguise. Now what I have here is a situation where, you know, I'd like to try to cancel stuff out. Wouldn't it be great if we could just cancel out the logs? Uh, but unfortunately, life doesn't work that way. Um, so instead, what we're going to have to do is remember that this is actually the change of base formula. Um, in other words, log base 2 of 2 over the log base 2 of x is equivalent to the log base x of 2. This is kind of a mind blower if you thought about it long enough because what we have is the reciprocal of a log is equal to the log of, well, just switch the base with the argument. That's one of those little cool little observations that I learned once a long time ago but forgot because I never had to use it. Turns out this comes in really handy right here. And let me show you what I mean. The log, or 1 over the log base 8 of x, is actually the log base x of 8. Holy crap, is that much easier to look at. So basically, 1 over the log base a of b is equal to the log base b of a is, is a new little property that I've sort of rediscovered or stumbled upon. Implications. Well, the sequence that they wanted us to add up forms a series as shown but that series in and of itself can be improved by rewriting it as the log base x of an ascending list of numbers. In fact I could even generalize it seems like this is a uh, an exponential growth or in other words a geometric sequence within the logarithm uh, it's two times uh, four to the n minus one is what produces the numbers the arguments of these logs. And uh, there's, you know, it's interesting because they're all the same base, so I can use my properties to just multiply 2 times 8 times 32 and so forth. But I, I have to use a little bit more sophisticated approach because there are 20 terms in the sequence. If I added those 20 terms up, I would get 100. So that's going to be some useful information. Which means I'm going to use summation of an arithmetic series again. And in order to do that, I need to know uh, what my common difference is. Much easier to find in this form. If we subtract the log base x of 8 minus the log base x of 2, then we get the log base x of 8 divided by 2, which is log base x of 4. So that's what's being added to the sequence every time. The common, uh, or the first term, is already known, log base x of 2. That gives me enough information to find s sub 20, 20 terms over 2, 2 times the first term, plus the common difference times one less than the number of terms in the sequence. This produces an equation as shown where uh, we have that obviously that's there. Here I'm going to use the power rule to get the log base x of 4. 19 is the difference here so I use the power rule and get 4 to the 19th power. Now because the bases are the same I can actually multiply the arguments here and get 10 times the log base x of 4 to the 20th power. We were told in the, in the beginning of the problem that the sum, this is the sum, this log expression right here, of the first 20 terms is equal to 100. Therefore, 10 times the log base x of 4 to the 20th power is equal to 100. I'm going to divide both sides by 10. Rather than making the powers bigger, I'm going to make the numbers smaller. And uh, then we can see that uh, if we have x, sorry, 10 is the exponent on x that gives me 4 to the 20th power. 10 is the exponent on x that gives me 4 to the 20th. Solve for x by taking the 10th root of both sides, if you will, and you get x equals 4 squared, or 16. So in other words, if I take this sequence 1 over the log base 2 of 16 plus 1 over the log base 3 of 16 plus blah, 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 if I had 20 whole terms of this kind of garbage, the whole sum would add up to 100. Nice and clean and perfect. So hope that's helpful. Have a great day.